What is fear? When we look at fear psychologically, it can be quite complex. But let's simplify it slightly. As in most human psychology, there is a working from conditioning. It really means habit and routine. And you know that if you're someone who worries or you're anxious or you're fearful in some kind of a way, it's something that's very hard to shake off. You have a certain attitude and you tend to approach different arenas of events fearfully. You tend to approach them thinking perhaps the worst is going to happen or even that if the best happens is bound to be followed by the worst, etc, etc. You, you, you may be nervous, you may be underconfident. There's so many different shades of fear. From point of view of human psychology, in applied therapy or counselling, then we look at the nature of that fear from where it's arising. We don't incidentally dig into the past. The reason for this misnomer is that people are already living presently in an imagined past. So it seems as if we will look for the roots, the source of fear and, and other patterns of behaviour in the past. It is never the case, actually. The past is only important because it's being lived in the present. Therefore, we go to the roots of the very nature of the fear to understand it, see where it's coming from, see what it relates to in terms of routine and habit and defensive strategies. And then we attempt to bring awareness to it because ultimately fear mostly is fantasy. Usually it pertains to another time and another place. All of this to say that the same as sadness and grief and anger and pain and hurt and all of these human conditions they're all eminently healable if we bring the intention to a capable, able therapist, counsellor, who will listen to us and work through these conditions with us in order to heal or release oneself from them. So it's part of dismantling the character of the personality, the habit and the routine of life then there may be some things to be afraid of here and there but on the whole probably if you're someone in therapy you're probably not living a life that's full of obvious danger the dangers that are there are usually controllable and the great plethora of danger and anxiety and worry has of course come from been generated by your mind so therefore it's eminently healable. From the spiritual point of view, which is different? Or which is in a sequence or a continuum in a way from this psychological reality of fear? Fear is the absence of love, but fear is the contraction of the ego actually. It's the identification with the small self. It's the delusion that you are somehow against or in conflict with everything else or somebody else or the world or events. Rather than being confluent then with arising forms, you become dissonant, you become conflictual. You see the world as a place where you have to pull back and contract and substantiate the ego I, you know, this sense of self that we all seem to have been born with was actually cultivated in early life conditioning of a necessity to give us a vehicle to negotiate early years. 
has no spiritual reality whatsoever. It remains as a human compunction. We need to travel through life. We have a body. There is a mind to deal with. There are emotions and energies and thoughts and so on and so on. But spiritually, the ego contraction, the way in which I identify with the smallness of the sense of I, is the antithesis of the spiritual insight or the spiritual breakthrough sometimes or what's popularly known as awakening. When I awaken then, I take my loyalty, my intention, my identification away from the sense of self that is the small I. I relinquish that in order to be my true self.